Hello everyone! In this video, I will show you how to create textures in Blender that you can reuse in your favorite game engine like Unity or Unreal Engine or Godot or whatever you use. So I have this Blender project and that is empty, nothing is happening yet. And I will show you every step from the very beginning. So in this case, we have a cube. We don't really want a cube here, we want to create a plane. Press Shift A to have the Add menu and then select a plane. Once you have done that, go into the Shading tab. And in this case, select the material that you want to focus on. By default, you have a material called material, which is just white. I'm gonna create a bit of a random material here. So I'm gonna press Shift A again. I'm gonna search for Vonoid texture. And I'm gonna collect the distance into the base color here. So my texture is not white, but it's not really that interesting. Let's say I'm changing that to have a bit of a noise. Let's say I'm gonna remove the randomness here. And this, we have a bit of a tiling floor. Not really great, but this is just for the sake of the example. Now you have your texture in Blender, but you want to have an actual image, something you can use in your game engine. Now that we have this texture, I'm gonna go into the menu here called Render Properties. Click on that. And there's a chance that you will see that the render, en the render engine used is EV. We want to change that from EV to Cycle. Once you've done that, a small setting to change is that for the viewport max samples, here we have a default value of 1024. I'm gonna change that to 16. And same for the render here, the render property, I want to change the max samples from 4096 to 162. What this does is when we are baking the texture, the render is gonna take less time to do, to happen which will make your baking faster and you'll be able to create textures faster. You might wonder, would that impact the quality of the baking? And the answer is not really. Um, I, I believe there's a very low chance you can see the difference between the number of samples that were used to uh, render some textures. So in this case, what you have to keep in mind is the lower the value, the faster your baking will be. And if you feel like the quality might not be enough for you, I kind of doubt it. But if that is the case, you can change the sample value to something higher, both in the viewport and in the render. So now that's being said, I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom of the menu here, and I can see an option called Bake. In this case, Bake is set to um, Combine by default. And in this video, I want to show you how to create diffuse textures, also normal textures, roughness, and also metallic textures. So in this case, I'm gonna change Combine to diffuse. So diffuse is what we uh, call the color textures. So in this case, it will be all the black dots that we see here. And we can see here we have contributions set to direct, indirect, and color. So contributions refer to the lights. So in this case, that would refer to the light of the scene. And we can see in my scene, I have a light by default. I'm gonna remove that. We don't really care about the light. We're not creating a scene in Blender. We're just creating a material to use in Unreal Engine or in Unity or any game engine. So I'm gonna delete the light and I'm also gonna delete the camera. I don't really need that. So now I'm gonna go back to the shading, click on the plane object. We see my material again. And now in the contributions, I'm gonna remove indirect and direct. I don't need the light from Blender to impact this texture. I just want to focus on the texture itself. So we're almost done now. The last step to create your first texture is to press Shift and A. This will open the Add menu and we will search for Image Texture. And I'm gonna create a new texture here by pressing the new button. And in here, I'm gonna call that Bake. And we'll keep everything to 1K at the moment. But if you want to have something in 2K, you can just change the values to 2048, both for the width and for the height. And same if you want to get a 4K texture in 8K, you just have to put the corresponding values. In this case, I'm gonna set that to just 1024. The last step is to make sure that your plane object is selected. So in this case, we can see the orange line around. If I click next to it, we can see there's no more orange line, so the object is not selected. So make sure it is selected and make sure the image texture node that we created here is also selected. In this case, you'll see um, a white outline around the node. 
You don't have to connect this node to anything, you just have to click on it, make sure it's selected. So you hear it's not selected, clicking on it, it is selected. So both my plane object is selected and my node texture is selected. And now I just have to press bake. We can see that there's some texture baking happening. It is quite fast because this is a very simple texture and I also got the samples to a low value. And here we are, we have this, uh, this texture here. So now I can just click here on the small menu button and on image I can click on save as and this will open the menu to save this texture. Once you save it, you can reuse that wherever you want. You will have a PNG file of the texture, in this case the diffuse texture. So make sure you name your uh, te different textures accordingly, so diffuse, normal and all that. So now that I did the diffuse one, I want to focus on the normal texture. In this case, there is no normal for my uh, for, for my image right here. So I'm just gonna create one. And in Blender, I'm gonna drag the distance from the void texture into a new node, look for bump and create a bump node. And then I will plug the normal of the bump node directly into the normal of the material. So in this case, this is still very boring because my material is just, you know, like a grid. There's no like actual normal happening. But if you were working on a texture where you can, where you actually are using some normal values, you know, creating some normal effects, then, oh, then you would, you would have something to see and then you would be able to bake it. Right now I can bake this texture. It's not really gonna impact my final texture, but at least I will show you how to get that. So now in the bake type, you just have to click uh, to change from diffuse to normal. Once again, make sure you select the image node, the image texture node, the object is selected, and now I can just go back into bake. And here we go, we have a normal map that's happening here. So we can see this is very different from the diffuse. My normal map is just completely blue because as I mentioned, what I have right now is really boring. But the process is the same, right click, uh, click on the image, click on the menu here, image, save as, and then you can save your file directly and name that uh, texture 1K normal. So that's two types of baking we can have. Now we just need the roughness and the metallic values. In this case, my roughness, let's say like, yeah, let's say I want something very reflective. So I'm changing the roughness to zero and the metallic value to close to uh, close to one. So we can see my material is already very different. So in this case, when we baked the diffuse texture, that does not impact anything else except the colors. So now we want to get something for the roughness. So this is going to be very simple too. Click on the uh, image texture, click on your plane. And instead of having a normal baking type, just want roughness, click on bake. And here you go. This is going to create a new texture. This time this will be a roughness texture. And we can see here, this is only black because well, my value is simply zero. So I just went back into my material and changed things a bit. I used a noise texture that I connected to a color ramp that I connected to the roughness. You don't have to do that. This is just to show you what the map would look like when we just have something that's not one single value, but actually a bit of randomness. In this case, I'm using some noise to create the randomness. So the moment I start baking it, we can see we have a completely different pattern. And we can see this is just purely the noise node that we that I just added. That is gonna change what part is gonna be uh, reflecting. So which part is gonna be rough and which part is not gonna be rough. So everything is in black will actually reflect and the roughness is pretty much set to one and everything closer to one is set to zero. And we can see on this material that it only seems that a few places are rough and others are not. So now the final thing is to get a metallic value. And this is where things can get slightly, uh, just a bit tricky in Blender. We don't have a back type that is metallic value. So what we're gonna do here um, once again, I'm going to use this node here, connect that to metallic value. Just to see the example. Um, and what I'm going to do to create a metallic value is you need to unplug temporarily the color. Select your image texture, select your plane, 
go into back type and this time once again you use diffuse and instead of connecting the color into the metallic value I'm going to connect it to base color this step is temporary so now I'm doing that and I'm going to bake And now we can see that the image I baked is slightly different from before. This is definitely not our diffuse color, but this will serve as a metallic map. So what we're doing here is since Blender does not allow for a metallic baking directly, what we're doing is we are getting the colors of the metallic value and we're putting that as a base color. So we're kind of tricking the software to say like, hey, I want to bake this base color, which is just gonna be between white and black, depending on uh, what you have and once you bake that you have this this image this texture that looks like a diffuse texture but you will use that as a metallic value because what we're doing is pretty much just baking values uh, from white to black so by creating this um, this diffuse texture we're actually like creating a metallic map that we can use later so at the very beginning we actually created the color texture and now we have this other color texture, quotation marks on that, that will serve as a metallic value. And now you can connect all of that into whatever material you're creating in uh, the game engine you're using. Once I'm saving this metallic value here, I will save that file as um, metallic and not diffuse because we are focusing on the metal value. So this is kind of a workaround that exists for Blender, just you're not creating a directly a metallic value, a metallic texture value, you're not directly creating a metallic texture but you are just creating a fake uh, diffuse texture to use as a metallic value. So once you've done that, once you saved all your files, make sure to always connect everything back to how it was. This way, if you need to redo that, you, you don't get confused into why some of your colors are not here, wh whatever is happening. And while I showed you everything that is just with a simple plane to create like simple textures, this also works for whatever objects you're creating in Blender that you want to directly bake the texture of, so you can reuse that into your game engine. So if you had a cube, um, you know, like let's say I'm having a cube here, I will, the process will be the exact same. Instead of a plane, I will have a cube and the process will be the same. And that's pretty much it for this video. So I will see you in the next one.